All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at Games Link's Planet Pack, which is being made by forum user GameLord1. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is, well, planets, though also moons, quite a few moons, all of which I almost completely missed, as typically when I go looking for planet packs, I usually tend to sway more towards those that add in entirely new star systems, as I love that adventure of exploring a new star. And this is not one of those packs, as it only adds in new celestial bodies to our existing star system. And yeah, typically I ignore those as I want to leave this star system and do other things. But I gave it a chance, looked at some pictures of it, and it has some pretty darn impressive planets so I figured what the heck let's take a look at it as it did prove to be pretty awesome so let's head into the tracking station and take a look at what all we got and uh, yeah we're not gonna have to stray far from our home of Kerbin here as after the moon we have a new moon called Ali and that moon has a moon of its own called Olamut or Olamut? Olamut? I have no idea how to say that. But the Ollie here, as you can see, is a very, very dark moon. Very hard to see anything, even though it is right in the very bright light. It's uh, an interesting thing. Apparently it was a rogue planet from the Kerbal system captured at around the same time as its little brother up here. Uh, very fun that all these planets and moons do have nice descriptions for them, which... Uh, I think added a lot of flair to this particular planet pack, and probably part of the reason I liked it so much. Some of them have interesting stories, and apparently more lore about these planets that you can discover when you explore them yourself. So uh, just a little tip there for you guys to definitely go and, you know, have a look at some of these. Now the next thing after, of course, Ollie and this strange dark planet is its little moonlet, I guess? Which apparently was born from a waffle. <laughs> oh, as you can kind of tell. It almost looks like it has water on it, but it's such a tiny little thing that's going to be very, very hard to land on. In fact, what is the size of this darn thing? 13 kilometer radius. That is pretty small with only 0 0.03 Gs of gravity. Wow. that uh, That's going to be an interesting one to land on. And indeed, even smaller and more interesting than Minmus, which of course Minmus is many times its size. Well, let's actually continue onwards to our next new things, where we have Nabos, which is one of my favorite planets that are added in. As we you can see, see here we do have this planet with two moons. Now Nabos itself apparently used to be the core of Jewel from according to this which is interesting before it became a gas giant which I, I don't know how that works exactly but it got itself a breathable atmosphere some beautiful oceans a very gorgeous ring to it and of course like I did say a couple of moons and I do really love the look of this planet it is one of my two there are two planets in this pack that are my favorites and really frankly why I'm looking at this pack today because those two are so awesome and this is one of them I mean come on just imagine landing down there and being able to see this beautiful ring plus the other moon there and it's just fun now the moon the first moon is Nebetos oh boy that's an interesting one now the description isn't in here as you can see but there is on the forum page a description of this one apparently something is disrupting telemetry around the area as this planet is being covered by some sort of unknown entity which is why it's all weird but uh, I think it looks frankly quite cool very cool in fact now as for its next moon we have Vega which we have no geological spatial or scientific data for this planetary body go on be the first to explore it and well that is that is pretty much that for Vega it's a small dust ball with extreme elevations according to my other list that I have on the other monitor from the forum page but yeah quite a cool little moon there and uh, yeah it would definitely be quite interesting to land on uh, but yes, let's uh, head to the next body that we have. Of course, Duna, the typical Ike. Then, ah, uh, another planet, Sonus. 
another cool atmospheric world, as you can see, after being a completely desolate wasteland barraged by meteors, Sonus inherited its rich oxygen and atmosphere from Olam, which I believe is its... no, not its moon. Where the crap is Olam? I'm forgetting. It's one of the other bodies that we have in this thing, so uh, I guess they crossed paths and it gained an atmosphere somehow. Very interesting, and a cool looking planet overall. It's got a lot of nice continents, a lot of great islands that would be quite entertaining to try and land on. And of course, with the even scatterer mods installed, you do also have a pretty cool cloud coverage there. And of course, it looks like a pop-marked, uh, cratered northern pole. Very fun, very cool indeed. And it has its moon, Sojus, right here, uh, which is just like the moon, apparently, but less moon and more moon. I don't... what? <laughs> There's some description for you. All right, but yeah, it is a fun little planet there, or, well, not planet, a moon, and, uh... Yeah, quite a nice little friend for Sonus. Now, on to the next. Ah, here's Olam. Oh, yes, Olam. I had forgotten that this was your name. Look at this beautiful gas giant in all of its magnificence with the very, very cool ring, which reminds me of that accretion disc for that mod we looked at just a few days ago. Actually, well, no, that was last week at this point, wasn't it? But yes, a very, very fun swirling cloud of doom for a ring around a very beautiful beautiful looking gas giant and as you can tell well it's a gas giant born from the ejected mass from a Kerbal and Jewel, a lot of Kerbal and Jewel involved in these things and it has a crap load of moons look at all these moons and they're all beautiful all of them are beautiful in fact we're about to get to my second of my two favorite planets on here uh, now first of course we do have a small moon of Varix which is a green goo ball just like its brother Corta uh, it's a Corta of what it once was <laughs> oh description you kill me but yes it's a very odd jagged green ball of goo which uh, would be quite awkward to land on, I would think, with just all the jaggedness of the whole thing. Now, the next planet is a Tetra, which is, well, apparently just a, a ball. Not much topography to it, but you know what? Could still be fun to land on, and you'd have a beautiful view of Olam over there. But I believe my, the next planet is my favorite. Ah, yes, Telos. Oh, I love Telos. This is my second of my two favorite planets in this one, purely because it's an awesome atmospheric habitable planet that you can land on with some pretty cool terrain. For some reason, it reminds me of like a populous map. Eh, that's a game I haven't played in a very long time. But landed on the right continent, you'd get this beautiful view of Olam in the background, which is just freaking gorgeous. Imagine that view when you're camped out with your whole little colony on here. It would be fun. Now, we do have a moon around this moon of Teloslate, which is funky frankly. Psychedelic, even. And, uh, yes, it's the first and sadly on and last moon of, uh, Telos there. The next moon we have is Volix, which used to be habitable, apparently, but it got so polluted that the world died off. It still technically has an atmosphere, but it ain't breathable, and it's full of very highly polluted oceans. But still, you have a nice view of the neighborhood over there, and lots of terrifying black clouds all around the planet, including a dark hurricane, because that's not creepy. <laughs> all right, the next one we have is Sheath, which is a pretty impressive. I do love the look of this thing. It's got a lot of good contrast and color here, and some very, very interesting topography would make for a fun one to explore. And of course, still a beautiful view of Oldham over there. Lovely. Then we have Foom, or Fume, the, I believe, the last moon of Oldham. But uh, yeah, got a lovely lovely little ring around it and of course just another crazy green planet gotta love them all right so we are now on to back to the normal moons ah well we have dread which is a new moon for drace and dread well is dreadful frankly not a whole lot to it, just some interesting topography, just a small little moon with a nice view of Drace, if you so desire. 
Uh, the next thing we have, of course, is, well, uh, normal Jewel, normal Lathe, normal Val, Tylo, Bop, Pole, Elu, and then finally we get to another new planet, Flak, which does have a little moon over there. And yeah, kind of an interesting one. Uh, apparently this thing's made of chocolate ice cream, according to the description. And its moon, yeah, is, is apparently, um, you know, named Flake after eating a chocolate flake, apparently, from the scientist who discovered it, and has some lovely mint color, which I think fits in with the whole chocolate ice cream theme. Good times. Now, the next celestial body we have is Theli, which is a metallic planet completely lost its atmosphere a few billion years ago, and uh, apparently closely resembles Duna. I don't see it personally, but it has a very cool ring. I mean, it's not exactly colorful, it's actually a little bit depressing with how far away it is from the rest of the planets, but you know what? Cool nonetheless. Now we have Corta over here, if you remember that Corta joke from earlier, it's just another green blob which apparently, according to the description, was uh, the scientist who discovered it wiped it or attempted to wipe it off the screen as they thought it was a ball of snot. Lovely. Lovely. Kerbal humor, folks. Kerbal humor. And then we're back to the sun, and I think, let's see, Moho, Scorch, there we go. I knew there was another planet in here in the inner system. Uh, it is tidally locked with uh, Gerbil over there, so it's going to be one hot planet to land on, and is pretty scorched overall. As you can see, though, it does have somewhat of an atmosphere, and is pretty impressive. I, it would be quite fun to land in some of these deep canyons over here. Very, very cool indeed, uh, but apparently some heavy atmosphere to get through that could cause you some issues uh, and let's see we have Eve dusk there we go another new moon uh, this one for Eve of course and this warm planet slash moon early in its formation the tectonic activity in its crust cause uh, parts of the planet to twist leaving unique twisted scars behind and there we go a lovely little planet lovely description and of course, usual Gili, and we're back to Kerbin, and there we go. That is the Games Links Planet Pack. I really do love this thing. It's got some pretty impressive moons and planets, and I do kind of like the addition of a moon with a a moon of its own around Kerbin, which would be quite interesting to explore. Oh, but I gotta say, I love, I love Telos. It's just such a Beautiful planet if we bring in this, uh, oh no, we're not at the perfect view that I like. Hold on, hold on. Let's bring out the orbit editor, go to graphical, and change the longitudinal node. There we go, that's a lot better, perfect. So we have a gorgeous view of this atmospheric planet, plus the gas giant behind it with the just beautiful purple ring. Oh, it's gorgeous, I really, Really do love the view here, and I plan on sending many, many missions to colonize this world, as it's just beautiful. Uh, but yes, if you'd like to check out this pack for yourself, and I definitely would suggest that you go and do so, you can take a look at the link in the description as always. Go play around with it uh, in the download folder that you do get. Uh, it will have two different folders, one for if you want Eve and Scatter installed, and one for if you don't, so uh, you don't have to overload your system if you can't handle that. But if you can fit it in there, it is worth it, as it does add some beautiful cloud coverage to the worlds, and just overall makes things a little bit more interesting. But yes, definitely go check it out, have some fun, visit these beautiful planets, and hopefully enjoy yourself in the process. Process. But yes, that's going to be it for today, folks. I hope you all have enjoyed. And of course, you do come back for the next when hopefully we'll be looking at another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.